Hey guys, Angela here and welcome back to Hobby Night and day one of Warhammer Fest 2021. Alright, day one is beginning with Age of Sigmar and they knew exactly how to start it off to get me really hyped for it all because they began with vampires. In fact, they started with the Soul Blight Grave Lords, which is the faction that I'm really looking forward to getting and they showed off a brand new, spectacular looking, but also kind of weird looking vampire lord model. And it is a, let me just look at my notes real quick. It is a Varen Vengorian Lord. And okay, I love lots of things about this model, but then I have some questions about this model. And the things that I love, let's go over those first because there's a lot of really cool things. The wings look spectacular. I love the ragged like look. The one on for the female, which is a named character specifically. Um, she especially, like her sculpt looks really amazing to me. And I love all of the detail on like all of their armor. I think her base work, especially that little gargoyle that's on there. Um, I don't, I can't remember actually now if the guy had it, but like the gargoyle was spectacular. Like it looks so darn cute. And I just absolutely love that level of detail that they're putting into these. Um, I love her head, like her hair, her face, all of it. I'm just, I'm so pleased. I wanna, I'm hoping they have like other heads like that for some lady vampires as I'm building my like army out and everything like that because I really want to use them. The thing that is weird to me about this model is the fact that it kind of looks like they just took a big monstery wolf bat comboed creature thing, cut its head off, and then stuck the torso and upper body of a vampire lord on top of it. And for me, it's just, I think it's a little weird because I'm like, okay, there's a torso up here. There's a rib cage up there in, you know, the vampire's chest. And then there's a second rib cage beneath. And it just looks very strange to me. So I don't know overall, like how I feel about the model, like in regards to just the combo of things and how they actually put it together. Like I like all the elements that they put on it, but the combination of how they attach them together just seems a little bit weird and almost a little bit lazy. So let me know what you guys think in the comments, because I'm I'm up in the air about this one. I keep going back and forth between really loving it and really hating it. Now, we didn't just see the big boy and lady for the uh, Soul Light uh, Grave Lords. We also saw a bunch of other models that are a little bit smaller coming out. and there's some interesting stuff about them because they kind of all look like they might have been expansions for Cursed City. And there's a lot of reasons as to why, partially because one of them is literally called Radukar the Wolf, and it's an alternate version apparently of him, um, of like him reborn. So it really sounds like they had a greater narrative that is now being just scrapped for Cursed City. And he's as evidence of this. And also they showed us, um, which his model looks really stunning, by the way. Absolutely love it. I love the sort of feral vampire look. I love this whole feral energy that they're doing across the board um, with their line right now between the orcs and what they're doing here with the vampires and everything um, with some of their designs. But they also had another model that was tied to Radikar as well. And it's a family member. I think it's his like grandmother or something like that. And she looks also really amazing like i absolutely love the model she feels absolutely like both of these characters should have been an expansion for curse city that just then got scrapped and maybe melded into the blight lord vampires um which i'm fine with on one hand but i wish they would actually address that and talk about it because if you look at the very final image that they showed for this presentation there were none 
of the models that they showed that were tied to the Curse City specifically, like the Radicar model, as well as the Radicar family member model, none of those were represented in the full image of the line. And they said that was pretty much everything that was coming out for it for the time being. And that sort of throws up red flags to me as to, you know, why aren't they there? Now they did show the dire wolves in that image, which is the other model that they showed us in this, which looked really cool. Although I'm actually not super thrilled by the dire wolves. They have so much fur on them still, but such blatant, like open sores. And I don't know if it's just the paint scheme that they put on them or how they, they highlighted where the sores were or something, but it just, oddly read a little too cartoony for me and it looked it, it just i don't know it didn't look good to me so i wasn't super thrilled with the wolves i want to try them out like with a different paint scheme or something and try something a little bit more blended um to see if maybe that changes my opinion on them. but right now i wasn't super super thrilled with them now those models were shown in that final image but like i was saying none of those other radicar models were so that tells me that they were just expansions that then got scrapped because of whatever happened with Curse City, whether it's the manufacturing problem, the, sh the plastic, I think, shortage problem that there's been going on, Brexit, you know, COVID, all of these things that have delayed or caused it problems. It seems like it was really bad and they just scrapped everything going forward. And this just seems like evidence of it. That doesn't dissuade me from being very hyped for all these models. I just wish they would be upfront about why the changes were made and everything. But who knows? Let's move on to what they showed next. Hey guys, if you are enjoying this video, make sure to hit that like button and let me know about it down in the comments. If you haven't already and you're wanting more content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon for notifications. And then if you want even more hobby goodness, make sure to follow me on Instagram or Twitter at hobby underscore night. Now let's go ahead and get back to the video. So next, they showed a new mobile game for Age of Sigmar that has a very chibi style art form that the chat was really not thrilled with during the presentation. And it's an auto chess um, sort of battler type game. It looks interesting, but very like antithesis of anything else that is Age of Sigmar. And so I just, I don't know how it's going to be fully received. We'll see when it launches. I was not born a god. With my mortal strength, I triumph over the weakness of my kin. For my weapons, I took the beating heart of the land and forged it anew. I took the treasure that defied the twin-headed god. I broke the bones of gods and drank deep of their power. The green ones understood. None stood before me and lived. Not beast, not drake, not their empires. All fell in dust and ruin until cowardly sorcerers snared me in a net of deception and bound me in chains beneath the mountain. Now I am free, but my people are gone. The weak remain. Next up, 
let's talk about the Broken Realms Kragnos book, because that is very exciting, and I have some theories about it because it's the last book for the Broken Realms, as they discussed on the live stream today. And that tells me that there might be a new edition of Age of Sigmar floating around out there coming very soon. And I know there's been speculation of that. There's some rumors that there might be an announcement of that potentially even this Saturday because of that tacked on day that they've added to Warhammer Fest. I still don't know if I fully believe that, but with the Broken Realms book being like this last one being the announced last conclusion to the book series, and it includes rules and narrative and all of that kind of stuff in the same way that Psychic Awakening did for Warhammer 40k. And I think some stuff that happened in like old world transitioning into Age of Sigmar originally, they always seem to do these sort of book series to sort of conclude editions of their games. I suspect we're going to be seeing a new edition of Age of Sigmar, whether that is this spring, this summer, or maybe this winter. Um, for like a seasonal release or something. I have no idea. Everything has kind of been thrown up into the air for them because of all of the scheduling changes and delays and production problems and everything that's been going on. But it's really exciting to see that there might be a new edition actually on the way. And this book seems really cool because not only is it going to be focusing on Kragnos and everything, which we'll talk about the model here in a minute, but it's also going to have updated rules for a lot of other factions, specifically focusing on the Destruction faction, because that is who he's going to be leading. He is a god tier or demigod tier model for them. So it's going to have his rules, how he can fit into any of the destru uh, destruction armies, which is really cool. So like orcs can use him, goblins can use him, ogres can use him, um, your giants can use him, anything else that falls into destruction can be used by him, um, which I think is really awesome. Like I'm glad that he is a diverse mini that can be used by a lot of different things rather than just being like exclusive to a Wood Elf faction or a Chaos faction or something like I originally had thought when they first previewed this guy coming out because he sort of looked Wood Elfish being a centaur-esque creature. Um, the horns really screamed Wood Elf to me just because they're very like bark heavy and everything like that. But no, he is destruction and going with the orcs, which is really cool that we're getting this really big orc push seemingly um, or destruction push on both the 40K side and the Age of Sigmar side. Now. Let's go ahead and discuss the actual model. Earthquakes has arrived and his miniature is just, oh my God. Okay, I do have one question though. They didn't put any fur near his crotch area, so where the heck is his penis? I just, I wanna know, where is it? But other than that, I love everything about this model. I think both of his face options are actually really cool. I like the sort of, um, almost cat-like or more mammal-like. I mean, I know horses and centaurs and stuff are mammals technically, but like it's more of a feline almost looking face or like it's just not traditional like looking face. And I really, really like it. I also think the open mouth option is really cool, but I also like the grimacing look. Like they did a great job. I also really enjoy the, spectac the, 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 the spectacularly spiky teeth. Um, but the thing that actually has me the most excited about this model is all of that juicy, gloria, like glorious armor. It's just, it looks so cool. I'm, I'm so, I'm so excited about it. I'm just getting super tongue-tied and stumbling all over myself. So I do apologize. But like, 
He has a bunch of fleshy bits. He has a bunch of armored bits. He has all that fur with his mane and everything. So there's lots of elements that I've really been enjoying painting right now all smushed into one model that's really big. And if you watched today's uh, painting video, I've been really kind of on this bigger model kick between Abaddon and the snake and doing like even the um, the uh, some of the, the the other bigger models I've done because I've completely blanked on their names. But like I've been on this real kick the of Lehman doing Russ. the Lehman Russ. Exactly. So like lots of big models recently and I'm I'm liking that trend in this guy really excites me to paint because I just think he's going to have like, it's just gonna be so much fun. Let me know what you guys think and what army you might be running him with. Because like I said, he's part of Destruction. You can run him with any of the Destruction guys. Um, and I think they gave us a little bit of stats on his, um, like a little bit of his stats, actually. I think he's got a two up save that I remember that I'm discussing. And I think he has an 18 plus wound. So he's, he's gonna be a chonky boy, really like, really good. So tell me how you're gonna use him. Tell me how you wanna paint him and whether or not you're gonna be picking him up because I definitely will be. All right, that has been day one for Warhammer Fest 2021. Tomorrow, we're going to be back again for day two where we're gonna be talking about Warhammer 40K. And I think they're going to be previewing some Sisters of Battle stuff, possibly a codex. Let me know what you think they're gonna be previewing tomorrow down in the comments and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye guys, thanks for watching.